Hi, I'm Liz Robertson. I'm the pastoral care worker at Greenford Baptist Church. I'm going to share some, with you today some thoughts and uh, I hope they are helpful and encouraging. I was reflecting the other day um, on my last visit to the dentist. Um, it was back in January and every time I go to the dentist I have a similar conversation with my dentist. She asks me if I've got any problems and I say no, not with my teeth. And then at the end of the uh, checkup, she uh, always reminds me that I should be flossing. And I go home and I think, yep, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to floss because that's what my dentist uh, has said is a good thing to do. And I do do it for a little while, but then it kind of peters out and it is something I don't uh, maintain. So this time, uh, the latest uh, visit to the dentist, uh, we have that same conversation. And uh, at the, uh, after, after the uh, cleaning um, and the uh, polishing, my mouth, it's a bit grim, was full of blood. And uh, she, my dentist, said to me, um, are you having difficulties uh, flossing? I said, no, I'm having difficulties remembering to floss. Ah, she said, you really do need to because that was a warning that your gums need looking after. Your teeth are fine. Very good, she said. But your gums need looking after and that's what flossing is for. So needless to say, I am now flossing every day and uh, because I've seen what the consequences uh, will be um, and I've changed my toothpaste, I've gone quite the other extreme direction um, and I was reflecting on that 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 can be a bit like us with God. We know that we should be spending time with him, we know that we should be investing and reading his word and uh, allowing him to speak to us through it and spending time with him and uh, but we do do it for a while I had been doing it and then it peters out like the flossing and other things come in its part way I mean flossing doesn't take that long really but it was another thing in the in the routine and it just you don't maintain it I didn't maintain it um but in this time of lockdown, I have been spending uh, a lot of time with God, reading his word, waiting on him, listening to him, talking with him. And I have seen a tremendous um, change and development in my relationship with him. And I want to encourage you, don't wait for the warning take this opportunity now that we have in this time of lockdown to invest in your relationship to allow god to invest in you read his word it's very easy to let the things of life take priority over it and what was amazing um, particularly for me in that morning when i was thinking about the whole dentist visit and the flossing and the comparison with um taking God seriously. I had a message from a friend who I haven't spoken to or heard from from a, from a while, or a long time actually. And her message to me was a question and it went like something like this. What has God asked you to do, but you've stopped doing it? Because you started, but you stopped because you didn't see results. And I thought, wow, yeah. I couldn't see the point in the flossing. Um, I knew it was a good idea, just as we know it's good to eat healthily. We know it's good to exercise, but maintaining it is a different story. And uh, I felt God was really speaking to me that day. And I want to encourage you to listen to God, to draw near to him. The promise is that if we draw near to him, he draws near to us. And uh, I wanted to say also that I feel God might be saying to somebody today that he has not forgotten you. Uh, I was reading Isaiah 41 and uh, 
verses 8 to 10 say this. But you, O Israel, my servant Jacob, who I have chosen, you descendants of Abraham, my friend, I took you from the ends of the earth, from the farthest corners I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. You are not forgotten. In fact, he goes on to say this. So do not fear for I am with you and do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. In the message, it's expressed like this. I have picked you. I haven't dropped you. Don't panic. I am with you. There's no need to fear for I am your God. I'll give you strength. I'll help you. I'll hold you steady. Keep a firm grip on you. If you're someone who has felt in recent days that God has forgotten about you, he says he hasn't. And on the contrary, he is holding you in his strong right hand and he will uphold you in this season. Another picture that I believe God gave me recently about this whole situation is one of a greenhouse. Now, I'm not horticulturally minded at all, um, but I know enough to know that a greenhouse is a place where young plants are put to be protected from the outside elements. And it's a place where uh, the gardener uh, spends a great deal of effort uh, watering, feeding, nurturing the plant. And I do wonder if this time is almost like the church is being held in a greenhouse where God is tending particularly to this growth period. That he is being particularly attentive with the watering, with the feeding and the nurturing and tending to us at this time. And I want to encourage you again to put your roots down into his word, to be fed on his word. Two Peter chapter one, verse three in the in the uh, passion translation says everything we could ever need for life and godliness has already been deposited in us by his divine power for all this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing him who has called us by name and invited us to come to him through a glorious manifestation of his goodness. He has called us by name, he knows each one of us, and we have everything that we could ever need for this life with him. It's already deposited in us. And in this time of being held in a greenhouse, he wants to nurture it, he wants to feed it, he wants to draw out that deposit from within us. Verse eight of the same chapter goes on and says, since these virtues are already planted deep within and you possess them in abundant supply, they will keep you from being inactive or fruitless in your pursuit of knowing Jesus Christ more intimately. And that is what he wants. He wants each one of us to know him increasingly more and more intimately. And this time is a key time, I believe. Uh, I think sometimes things in greenhouses, uh, there is a um, acceleration in the rate of growth. We've got roots. We're rooted in things. What are your roots rooted into? Are they rooted into the word of God? Are they rooted into God himself? Where are your roots? Where is your stability at this time? What is keeping you stable? Let it be God. In 
In Colossians 2, verses 6 to 7, again in the Passion Translation. In the same way you received Jesus as Lord and Messiah by faith, continue your journey of faith, progressing further into your union with him, your spiritual roots going deeply into his life as you are continually infused with strength, encouraged in every way, for you are established in the faith you have absorbed and enriched by your devotion to him. Your spiritual roots go deeply into his life. We draw on, on his life for our life. So faith is mentioned there. And uh, this is a time of, of testing our faith because there are so many unknowns and a lot of the things that we um, rely on or have up until recently have been stripped away. And uh, it reminds me of uh, a scene in the film Evan Almighty when his wife is very perplexed uh, he's been behaving very, very strangely. She doesn't understand why. She's in a restaurant and uh, the waiter actually, played by Morgan Freeman, is, is God, but she doesn't realise that. And she's looking um, concerned and worried and he says, are you OK? And she says, not really. My husband's acting really strangely. She said, you know, I'd hoped that we would be drawn together as a family, but I've, I've, I've moved away because he's behaving so weirdly. And uh, Morgan Freeman, in the character of God, explains to her that when people ask for courage, do I give them courage or opportunities to be courage courageous? When people ask for patience, do I give them patience or opportunities in which to be patient? And when we ask for faith, maybe we can say the same thing now. Does he give us faith? Yes, he does. But he also gives us opportunities to rely on that faith and develop that faith and strengthen that faith. And as we draw near to him and spend time and read his word and listen and wait on him, our faith is strengthened. I'm going to finish by reading just one more verse from the second letter of Peter. It's in the first chapter and it's verse two. May grace and perfect peace cascade over you as you live in the rich knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. God bless you.